Did you want to read that note? Did you want to read that note that that Colorado man wrote? The one that Roger Roger wrote. Yeah. He wrote an yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, that other letter you was postmarked December twenty third. The which one? The, 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 Oh, yeah. I don't know, just, you know, just... Oh, I got there. I mean, they, a, they need an answer by the 17th of January. Okay, that's coming up. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 17th? Uh, Two days. Ask her. So, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So, he's on our mailing list, I presume? He is. Good for him. Okay, good. Hey, look here. I want to see two things. I want to see the role of the daemon. Oh, yeah. And in order to see that, we want to see how he concludes the Timaeus in terms of the philosopher. Right? That's what we want to see. Now, it's going to take us a couple of pages to do so. Right? But with help, we might be able to get there. Cool. So, uh, <clears throat> then after this comes a section which is really uh, the role of the daemon in Plato's time is, and what could be called Tantra. Right. Now, uh, now this begins at ninety one A. So we have two parts, so let's get a couple of readers and see how we can play it. You know what? It would be good to sketch it out because you can visualize it, you can draw a picture of what he's talking about. So let's, would you care to read? Sure. The first one, which is 89D. Concerning both the composite living creature and the bodily part of it, how a man should both guide and be guided by himself so as to live a most rational life. Let our statement stand thus. But first, and with special care, we must make ready the part which is to be the guide to the best of our power so that it may be as beautiful and good as possible for the work of guidance. Now to, expand, to expound this subject alone in accurate detail would in itself be a sufficient task, but treating it merely as a side issue, if we follow on the lines of our previous exposition, we may consider the matter and state our conclusions not inaptly in the following terms. We have frequently asserted that there are housed within us in three regions, three kinds of soul, and that each of these has its own motions. So now likewise, we must repeat as briefly as possible that the kind which remains in idleness and stays with its own motions in repose necessarily becomes weakest, whereas the kind which exercises itself becomes strongest. Wherefore, 
care must be taken that they have their motions relatively to their to one another in due proportion. And as regards the most lordly kind of soul, we must conceive of it in this wise. We declare that God has given to each of us, as his daimon, that kind of soul which is housed in the top of our body, and which raises us, seeing that we are not an earthly but a heavenly plant, up from earth towards our kindred in the heavens. And herein we speak most truly. For it is by suspending our head and root from that region whence the substance of our soul first came from that divine power. So, so where, whence the substance of our soul first came from that divine power keeps upright our whole body. Hmm. Okay, hold it there. Yeah. Right. Okay. All of the work he did before on analogies, remember that whole section? and how he sees that as being the model for the universe, mm -hmm. here's where he applies it to the individual person. Mm. Right? Wherefore, care must be taken that they have their motions relatively to one another in due proportion. Right? Mm -hmm. Their so exercises. Hmm. And it's following the model of the analogy of that earlier section that we talked about. Okay, let's go to the next part. Okay. Whoso, uh, Whoso then indulges in lusts or in contentions and devotes himself overmuch thereto must of necessity be filled with opinions that are wholly mortal and altogether, so far as it is possible, to become mortal. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm not reading these right. Whosoever then indulges in lusts or in contentions and devotes himself over much thereto must of necessity be filled with opinions that are wholly mortal and altogether, so far as it's possible to become mortal, fall not short of this in even a small degree, even in as much as he has made great his mort excuse me, mortal part, that he who has seriously devoted himself to to learning and to true thoughts and has exercised these qualities above all his others must necessarily and inevitably think thoughts that are immortal and divine if so be that he lays hold on truth and in so far as it is possible for human nature to partake of immortality he must fail thereof short thereof in no degree and inasmuch as he is forever tending his divine part and duly magnifying that daimon which dwells within him, along with him, he must be supremely blessed. And the way of tendance of every part by every man is one, namely to supply each with its own congenial food and motion. And for the divine part within us, the congenial motions are the intellections and revolutions of the universe. Right. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the model that he talks about earlier that we mentioned. He mentions mm -hmm. it again. Go ahead. These each one of us should follow, rectifying the revolutions within our head, which were distorted at our birth, by learning the harmonious, the harmonies and revolutions of the universe, and thereby making the part that thinks like unto the object of its thought in accordance with its original nature, and having achieved this likeness, attain finally to that goal of life which is set before men by the gods as the most good, both for the present and for the time to come. And now the task prescribed for us at the beginning to give a description of the universe up to the production of mankind would appear to be well nigh completed. For as regards the mode in which the rest of living creatures have been produced, we must make but a brief statement, seeing that there is no need to speak at, at length. For by such brevity, we will feel ourselves to be preserving a right proportion in our handling of these subjects. Wherefore, let this matter be treated as follows. 
Okay, now masculine and feminine, Plato plays a major role. Here's where he spells it out, hmm. right? And therefore it's worth looking at. But first, what do you think of this interesting statement? Hmm. It pulls together the early part of the dialogue with his analogies in the creation of the universe and says, hey, you're gonna use that within yourself. Uh -huh. So he then has a cosmology and a psychology that match. And the one makes the other like itself. Right. And the role of the daemon? Is, I don't know. What a dope I am. See, the role of the daemon is where? Hmm. Well. There. Up from earth to the heavens. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the crown of the head. Hmm. Definitely in the highest. Yep, 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 yep. Now, yeah. take a look, please. Take a look. It's good. Oh, there it is. Okay. He must fall sh inasmuch as he is forever tending his divi divine part. This is at 90 C5. Uh, and duly magnifying that, and duly magnifying that daimon who dwells along with him, he must be supremely blessed. So, but the exercise starts before that. So. We declare that God has given to each of us as his daemon that kind of soul which is housed in the top of our body and which raises us, seeing that we are not an earthly but a heavenly plant up from the earth towards our kindred mm. in the heavens. Okay. I have a, a different translation. It's, it's kind of neat. Can yeah, go ahead. But with respect to the most principal and excellent species of the soul, we shall conceive as follows. That divinity assigned this to each of us as a daemon, and that it resides in the very summit of the body, elevating us from earth to an alliance with heavens. As we are not terrestrial plants, but blossoms of heaven. Hmm. The last mm -hmm. part, blossoms of heaven. I get this picture of uh, you know, going backwards, right? Mm -hmm. like instead of going up towards heaven, that we are yeah. in heaven. Yeah. Our roots are. In yeah, that's Thomas. Yeah. Okay, how about men and women, male and female? Accordingly, okay. according to the probable account. Somebody want to read? Okay, Did you want to pass according it According to the probable account, all those creatures. Re Julie, huh? slow, slow. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Measured, so to speak. According to the probable account at 91. Please. All those creatures generated as men who proved themselves cowardly and spent their lives in wrongdoing were transformed. <clears throat> at their second incarnation into women. And it was for this reason that the gods at that time contrived the love of sexual intercourse by constructing an animate creature of one kind in us men and of another kind in women. And they made these severally in the following fashion. From the passage of egress for the drink where it receives and joins in discharging the fluid which has come through the lungs beneath the kidneys into the bladder and has, has been compressed by the air, they bored a hole into the condensed marrow which comes from the head down to the neck and along the spine, which marrow in our previous account we termed seed. And the marrow inasmuch as it is animate and has been granted an outlet, has endowed the part where its outlet lies with a love for generating by implanting therein a lively desire for emission. Wherefore in men, the nature of the genital organs is disobedient and self-willed, like a creature that is deaf to reason, and it attempts to dominate all because of its frenzied lusts. And in women, again, 
owing to the same causes whenever the matrix or womb as it is called, which is an indwelling creature desirous of childbearing, remains without fruit long beyond the due season, it is vexed and takes it ill. And by straying all ways through the body and blocking up the passages of the breath and preventing respiration, it casts the body into the uttermost distress and causes, moreover, all kinds of maladies until the desire and love of the two sexes unite them. Then, calling, as it were, the fruit from trees, they sow upon the womb as upon plowed soil animal animalcules that are invisible for smallness and unshapen. And these, again, they mold into shape and nourish to a great size within the body, after which they bring them forth into the light and thus complete the generation of the living creature. In this fashion, then, women and the whole female sex have come into existence. And the tribe of birds are derived by transformation, growing feathers in place of hair from men who are harmless but light-minded. Men, too, who, being students of the worlds above, suppose in their simplicity that the most solid proofs about such matters right. are obtained by the sense of sight. Yeah. This, then, is the section on transmigration. Oh. And that ends it, mm. right? So, what do you think of this distinction between men and women, male and female? Mm. Right. A lot of tension between them, right? Right, yes or no? Come on. But what, did, what finally unites them after all of that difficulties? It says the desire and love of the two sexes unites right. them. That's right. That's where it is. So all of that difficulties, that's their, this is the way they're resolved. Right, right, right. Is there a Tantra in there? Tantra usually means that it starts, there's a union, the spine plays a major, that's the serpent power, and it culminates in the Shushuma and passes through various centers he calls them four different kinds of souls if we want to go into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, he calls it divine seed, right? And the goal is to do this. And if you do this, this then is the activity that brings about the union with the daemon, which is at the top of the head, which mm -hmm. again is top. Yeah. Well, I just thought this word that um, the lobe is only translating as unite, is actually um, soon ago, right? You know how we get anagogic? Yes. This is leading them together, right? So, a joined, in a joined manner, but it's leading them, I presume, upwards in a joined manner. Yes. Yes. The yes. yes. I think that's better. Though. Yes. And equally well, the, war, the great word phronesis plays a major role ah. in uh, uh, 90 B.C., especially the end of B and C. Uh, the kind of learning that he's talking about awakens yeah. the phronesis. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, 
Those are his thoughts, right? Learning and true thoughts. Philomathein and pro true phronesis. Right. Therefore, the way in which you can bring this together <laughs> is described at uh, D, the same section, or just about D at 90. Uh, the part about... Yeah, every part of comma one. Mm -hmm. Supply each with its own congenial food and motion, and for the divine part within us, the congenial motion are the intellections and revolutions of the universe. These, each one of us, should follow rectifying the revolutions within our head, which were distorted at birth, by doing what? By learning the harmonies and revolutions of the universe and therefore making the part that thinks like unto the object of its thought. Mm. Right? Yeah, it's also, mm. the, yes. um, well, the word congenial is, is mm -hmm. that's really Latin, you know, uh, I'm assuming, maybe it's partially Greek, but the point is that the word in Greek is sugenis, mm -hmm. right? So when it says, with its own congenial food and motion, mm -hmm. right? The way of tendance of, of every part by every man is one, namely to supply each with his own, it's like uh, the part that they're talking about has is, is in the same line of descent. It's di descended directly, which we've already seen. Mm -hmm. But I mean, rather than congenial, which sounds like friendly, but really contains within it a together with the race, that's sure. what this is. It's saying you're, that part of you is a direct, de indirect descent from the divine. And so you need to find a food and a trophy and a motion that is of that same nature. And that's what will um, take, that's what will tend or nurture the divine part. Right? Yeah. So you see again, congenial motions are the intellections of the universe. Right? Same, same idea, the same con I mean, this is a noose. Liking, making the part that thinks like unto the object of its thought. That's kata no noun and kata no meno, which are both direct applying the noose, applying mind or intellect. So it's not thought like a, we think of discursive thought or thought concerned with the realm of becoming. Mm. So now you have a task. Mm. Now you have a task. So now you have to go back to his cosmology, especially the role of analogies all the way through it, right? It's motions and analogies to the soul. How do you do that? That means you have to go back and see the psychological side of his cosmology so you can apply it to the soul. That sounds very difficult. Mm. So no, it should, small, no, it should be obvious. Should be obvious. If you understand it. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the task, isn't it? Yes. That's the task. And if you're able to do that, then the universe has the same model within yourself for your own development. 
Therefore, fulfills the condition of the first paragraph, providence is the key wrote word in understanding the time is. Mm. Right? Because you're applying the metaphysics to the psychology of the soul. Um. You know, you've said in the past that this, the universe is, functions to our benefit. Mm -hmm. in bringing those ideas, those um, pathologos or thoughts that are not completed. Mm -hmm. that are like, and it seems like there's something interesting about that, that, that our, the motion of our soul in a way mm -hmm. comes back, mm -hmm. and brings mm -hmm. us back. It's like they're floating plants. Okay, here comes that one again, where you have to then reflect on it in order to move higher. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And to, do, and to be able to see that is then, is the basis of his uh, therapy. Mm, yes. Right. It's because when he goes back, he talks about the different kinds of souls, the different uh, arenas that take place within the soul, and therefore it all fits together. But what does it mean? You first have to see the problem so that you can go back and take a look at it. So are we going to do that next week? No, not next week. Three weeks from now? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it would take, wouldn't it? Yeah. And yeah. it's a textual reading. Yeah. yeah. So in his world, you can't have a psychology without a metaphysics. That's the answer. Thank you. That's right. Weird. So that's, that's it. I want my money back. Or at least an anagogy. Yeah. They're intertwined. Yeah. Curious? Yeah. Yeah, good. I wanted to cover that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which is, all, which is always fun. Yeah. Okay. And, mu and much less contentious. Good. Thank you. And I'm taking donations if anyone wants really cool. tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. No, you're welcome. Come again. Here's $20. Oh, okay. In fact, if you're willing to write it.